the Chumash Native Americans, masters of land and sea on the California coast. Join us as we learn about their unparalleled navigation skills, beliefs, and culture. The Chumash navigated the vast Pacific waters in canoes called tomals and thrived along the rich coastal landscapes of California. Their homes, dome-shaped structures fashioned of willow branches and whalebone, are a monument to their creative minds, demonstrating their deep awareness and intrinsic connection to the land and sea. Thriving from Malibu to Paso Robles and inland to the west edge of the San Joaquin Valley, their capabilities weren't confined to the land. They were also extraordinarily talented boat builders, creating massive wooden plank canoes called tomals that they cleverly used to navigate the coast's waters between their villages and the Channel Islands. This exceptional knowledge and mastery over land and sea equipped the Chumash with the capacity to utilize every resource available to them, enabling them to harmoniously coexist with their environment. This harmonious balance of land and sea skills shaped them as true masters of their environment. Imagine a civilization that relied on natural rhythms of the earth for timekeeping rather than contemporary technology. The Chumash constituted such a society. Their culture was heavily influenced by their unique affinity to the scorpion tree and caverns. The scorpion tree, a gnarled, ancient juniper, was a crucial part of the Chumash's unique calendar system. They observed its shadow and the position of the sun throughout the year to determine the best times for hunting, gathering, and conducting sacred rituals. This ancient tree, standing defiantly against the elements, served as a living calendar guiding the Chumash through the cycles of the seasons. The Chumash's bond with nature stretched beyond the land and into the subterranean realm. The Chumash saw caves as more than just shelter from the elements. They were sacred locations, frequently decorated with beautiful paintings and petroglyphs depicting their beliefs, customs, and understanding of the universe. These caves served as their canvas, shelter, and space for rituals, introspection, and communication with the spiritual realm. The images documented in these caves, ranging from commonplace to mystical, provide an insight into the Chumash's rich and varied cultural tapestry. The scorpion tree and caverns demonstrate the Chumash's intimate relationship with nature and spiritual beliefs. These natural features serve as quiet testimony to a time when man and nature coexisted peacefully and respectfully. Can our relationship with our planet exceed the mere basics of survival? This fundamental question is at the center of Chumash culture. The Chumash, indigenous residents of the Channel Islands and the Santa Monica Mountains, shared more than a superficial kinship with their environment, the land and the sea. This deep-seated connection was deeply intertwined into the fabric of their society, imprinting their language, defining their rituals, and permeating every part of their daily lives. Their separate language is thought to be a derivation of the Hokan language family, held a pivotal position in shaping and defining their rich cultural heritage. This unique language, together with their great understanding of nature, acted as a conduit for their wisdom and deeply ingrained customs. The Chumash language, rich with words and phrases that express their profound respect for the earth and its bountiful offerings, was consciously passed down through generations, through the ancient art of storytelling and in daily encounters. However, their relationship with the earth was not one-sided. The earth was their treasure, graciously supplying a diverse range of food from the oceanic harvest of fish, shellfish, land-dwelling creatures, and the essential acorns. Yet, to the Chumash, earth was more than a mere provider. They revered it as a vibrant, living entity deserving of respect and care, a philosophy that was reflected in their lifestyle and practices. They used plants, vegetables, and animals sustainably, ensuring that nothing was wasted. Their homes, built from locally obtained plant materials and the bones of whales, harmoniously blended with their beloved natural landscape. Who were the neighbors of the Chumash, and how did their cultures intertwine? The Gabrieleno Tongva tribe, an indigenous people with a rich cultural legacy lived beside the Chumash. Despite their geographical proximity, the two tribes had distinct cultures and languages, each adding to the rich fabric of California's indigenous history. The Chumash, with their deep connection to the earth, and the Gabrieleno Tongva, known for their advanced knowledge of astronomy, 
admit each held a unique philosophy and way of life. The relationship between these two tribes was complex, marked by both cooperation and conflict. They traded goods and ideas, participated in intertribal marriages, and occasionally engaged in disputes over resources. Yet, this intricate web of relations between the Chumash and the Gabriel and Otongva tribes is an essential part of understanding the broader context of the indigenous cultures of California. The coexistence of these two tribes adds another layer to the rich fabric of California's native history, demonstrating diversity, tenacity, and flexibility in the face of change. The Chumash people were masters of land and sea, but where did their journey begin? The Chumash people's roots can be traced back to the Channel Islands, more specifically, Santa Cruz Island. This island, the largest of California's Channel Islands, was not just a home, but a central hub for the Chumash people. Its strategic location, nestled in the Pacific Ocean, yet close to the mainland, provided an ideal environment for the Chumash culture to grow and thrive. The island's abundant resources, from the rich marine life in the surrounding waters to the diverse flora and fauna on land, provided the Chumash with everything they needed to sustain their way of life. The Chumash people, with their deep understanding and respect for nature, lived in harmony with their environment, utilizing the island's resources sustainably. Santa Cruz Island, a place of origin and a testament to the Chumash's enduring connection to the sea. Chumash society was a vibrant one, where chiefs, skillful craftsmen, including artists, builders, and creators, reshaped the environment around them alongside shaman priests. These shaman priests, who served as spiritual guides, divine interpreters, and spiritual navigators, were an essential component of the Chumash world. As we delve into the heart of Chumash society, we discover a pioneering community. They were masters at exploiting the richness of their surroundings, from the vast marine life of the Pacific to the botanical and animal life on land. The Pacific Ocean is filled with fish and shellfish, and other marine species was their extensive menu. The Chumash culinary arts, therefore, featured a wide variety of flavors. Their diet was not only dependent on these marine resources, but also incorporated land animals. The often overlooked acorn, however, was the silent culinary hero. Transformed into flour and included as a key ingredient in countless dishes, it provided sustenance for the Chumash for countless generations. The Chumash, beyond their knack for resourcefulness, demonstrated an amazing aptitude to innovate. They created a one-of-a-kind calendar system based on their intimate connection to and comprehension of nature. On the subject of hunting, the Chumash demonstrated unique methods and techniques. While deer were a popular food and in big supply, it was their marine ability that really distinguished them. Their intricate and strong canoe designs enabled them to go further into the Pacific, expanding their hunting grounds and supplemented their diet with a wider range of marine creatures. More than merely survival, Chumash culture evolved into a vibrant world of artistic inventiveness and color, as seen by sophisticated basket weaving, bead crafting, and rock art. These creative activities had uses and carried relevance and demonstrated their remarkable artistic abilities. Herbalism was important in the Chumash heritage. They possessed a thorough awareness of the medicinal virtues of native plants, like sage, elderberry, and yucca, and used them appropriately to treat a variety of health problems. This wisdom, carefully passed down over centuries, represents their sharp observation, understanding, and profound respect for nature. The Chumash culture embodies human inventiveness and adaptability. Their enduring legacy teaches us about the broad spectrum of human diversity and the remarkable ways cultures can develop and adapt to their environments. As we near the end of our voyage, we discover that the Chumash were masters of not only land and sea, but also art, games, and money. The Chumash developed an inventive system of monetary exchange. They utilized beads produced from marine snail shells, fondly referred to as Angchum. It is surprising to understand that they had a standardized money system, which we typically regard as a modern concept. Now let's look at the cave walls. You'll find an incredible assortment of cave paintings and petroglyphs. These were constructed with red ochre and charcoal, which were combined with various materials to create a distinct palette. Each stroke and symbol tells a story about their past, depicting their beliefs, customs, and deep connection to the cosmos. 
But life for the Chumash was not just about survival and spirituality. They also understood how to have fun. They enjoyed games of chance, using the Anchum as a betting currency. These games were more than just amusement. They were profoundly ingrained in their social fabric and were frequently employed to settle disagreements. These features of Chumash culture, their art, games, and currency, demonstrate their inventiveness and adaptability. The Chumash were people who, despite the severity of their surroundings, discovered methods to express their creativity, entertain themselves, and preserve social harmony. The Chumash were not only dwellers, but masters of their planet. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe button. New videos every week, and a raffle is coming for merch once I reach 100 subscribers. Have a great week!